Okay, greeting folks. Let's talk about uh, psychological foundation to curriculum. So as I told you before, we have four uh, foundation to curriculum. There is the philosophical foundation. Now we are talking about psychological. And then later we will talk about historical and social foundation towards curriculum. Now psychological foundation itself is a, it's one of the major cornerstones next to the philosophical foundation. Now psychology deals with how humans learn and behave. After all, the main goal of any curriculum is to bring about learning. Hence, curriculum developers need to know how humans learn so that they can incorporate psychological principles when they design, develop and implement curriculum. Just as there are varying philosophical orientation, there are also varying concepts of human learning and how curriculum should be conceived, especially with regard to learning in the classroom. Psychology is divide, derived from the Greek word psyche, which means soul. Okay? It is a discipline devoted to the study of behavior, mind and thought. Especially it deals with the study of mental process that determines a person's behavior and thinking. When applied to teaching and learning, it provides the basis for understanding how students learn and how, how to understand a body of knowledge or how a student will understand a body of knowledge. The curriculum developer has to know how students learn and to take into consideration individual differences when designing a curriculum. Okay? It is only when students learn and gain from the curriculum, the curriculum is considered to be successful. Okay? Now, psychological, uh, psychological psychology uh, has three schools of thought. Okay? So we will go through them. The first one, basically we have already answered what is psychology. Psychology is the scientific study of mental and function and behavior, mental functions and behavior. The major theories of learning has been classified into three groups. Now, what are the three groups? The first one is behaviorist theory. Now, behaviorist theories tend, behaviorists tend to focus on the overt or the external behavior of a person. And so, uh, obviously this came first. Uh, many people have spent a lot of time studying. I mean, they studied what they could see. So from a behaviorist perspective, we only study what we could see and therefore we only manipulate uh, a person from a behaviorist standpoint. Now this eventually evolved into cognitivist theory. Because the cognitivists were saying, what they are trying to say is, well, there is something that's going in the mind because one could just, one shouldn't just limit uh, studying what is uh, overtly observable, but one should spend more time in the process, the way things are, what are things taking place in the head. Now, Cognitivist has, has gained great traction into the modern education theories and it, and it is it is so complex that they have actually split. The, the new paradigm that everyone will be talking about is the constructivist approach. It is actually part of Cognitivism. Uh, so, uh, so later we will talk about how Piaget and Vygotsky are the particularly two contributors to constructivism and how uh, this has evolved into a, 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 a advanced science in curricular design. Then you have the final one with the humanistic or phenomenological and humanistic approach to psychology. It studies about the human relationship to his environment and to himself, how he positions himself with with the, with the overall things of the environment and things like that. So there are three major schools. You have the you have the behaviorist, which is the most fundamental, followed by cognitive psychology, and finally, the humanistic uh, approach to psychology.